boss for the Harbormen was the fact that Central Catholic had so much speed and so many lanes to work with. So really the focus in this game today, Don, is going to be for Hingham to play a clean game. They've got to stay out of the box. They gave up three power play goals to this dangerous Central Catholic squad last time. So it's going to be a dogfight, but Hingham has to play within the confines of the rules and try to keep this a low-scoring affair. Yeah, no, you're so right. You talk about the special teams play. It's spectacular in game one uh, for Central Catholic of this tournament at the D1A level. Obviously, they got guys that have a lot of experience. They played in the championship game a year ago. Yes, they lost to Arlington in overtime. Somewhat of a surprise. Uh, they come back with a lot of talent. And, you know, it's a team playing with a, ship, a chip on their shoulder right now, and, uh, and that means an awful lot. I talked with head coach Kim Branvold earlier today, and he said, Don, this is a redemption tour in 2018. This is a Central Catholic squad that was mere minutes away from a state championship at TD Garden last year. He says he's never talked about that loss to Arlington in OT 2-1 to one last year, but it's something that's always in their subconscious. As a first-year head coach, Branvold was thrilled to see his team make it all the way to the championship game, but this year, they certainly have that chip on their shoulder, and they hope to continue a hot streak here against Hingham today. When you've got a 22-1 record, seemingly everything has gone their way this year. How can they handle some adversity, and is there any chance that Hingham can pull off the upset here today? We're going to find out. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they can. Obviously, they come with quite a tradition of winning ice hockey games, but as you mentioned, they need to play their best against this Central Catholic Raider team. It's going to be a lot of fun. Folks still making their way in here to the Songus. Uh, we'll take a quick break. We'll be back with a starting lineup brought to you by Friendlies right after this. right back here at the uh, beautiful Sangus Center. It used to be the home of the Lowell Lock Monsters a few years back of American Hockey League play and uh, we'll have the introduction of the starting lineup here. Uh, the Raiders of Central Catholic coming in as a top seed and you know the Singham team uh, has really been around the top five top six all year long. Certainly well deserved. It'll be interesting to see uh, what they can do here. Robbie uh, Pornak is a guy that can get the job done for the Harbourman, the goaltender, and they have some guys that, that can light the lamp when need be. Terrace would be one of those guys to watch 12 goals during the regular season coming in the tournament play here. Robbie Kornak has racked up seven shutouts this year. He's averaging a clean sheet nearly every three games, and Hingham may really need him to stand on his head against Central Catholic. We all know, Don, in a tournament scenario, you need a hot goaltender and someone who's going to clean up those messy rebounds in front because a lucky bounce of the puck could determine your tournament fate. So you talk about this uh, Hingham team and what they might need to do, play clean hockey, play well in all three zones, play well on special teams, perhaps what they need to do best is they really need to, they really need to play, perhaps play physical hockey versus the Central Catholic team here today. If they can slow them down. It was really a feeling from Higgum that they controlled extended portions of that previous Central Catholic game. The fact is, the puck didn't just go in the net, and that was thanks in large part to Matt Guascale, who was so good during that matchup, he picked up a clean sheet for Central Catholic. So really, I think, Don, the key in this game is who can ship through first and, and get that first goal set momentum here on a tighter ice sheet. This is typically NHL dimensions here at UMass Lowell and a rink that head coach Kim Branvold for Central Catholic knows so well. He played his college hockey here. In fact, he says he still knows the Zamboni man here at UMass Lowell, so I think he knows the bounces of these boards and this ice better than just about anyone else in this tournament. You talk about the Zamboni man, I think he's been here forever, so I guess things never change. That's what it's all about. <laughs> now we're going to have the playing of the national anthem. We're going to keep it right here. It will be done live and in color here at the Sangus Center to kick off a twin bill of ice hockey here today.
All right, Kevin, being a man of perfection, I wanted to get the uh, the record just about right. I could be off one. 13, 4, and 6 for the Harpenman. 21 and 1 uh, for Central Catholic. Close enough, it tells a story. You got two pretty good hockey teams playing here tonight. Yeah, you said it right. Central Catholic, the number one seed in the tournament. Hingham, the four seed. Two teams coming off impressive efforts last time. And nice of our ombudsman to check in early and let us know via email that, hey, let's make sure that we give due credit to Central Catholic. They've only had one loss this year. Hingham needed overtime to beat Andover in a thriller. They scored that uh, game winning goal on the power play. And, of course, uh, really an easy time of it for Central Catholic and their win over St. John's, the Pioneers of Shrewsbury, as they beat them by the score of 4 to nothing. They got a couple of goals from uh, Jankowski in that one. So we're just about set. Face off to come at center. Central Catholic will defend down to our left in the Hingham. Harbourman down to our right to get it going. Kowski will take the face off going up against Frankie Higgins who scored that overtime game winner for the Harpenman. We're underway and Raiders will send it quickly in there on a quick dash to the far side on the forward check. It's Jankowski trying to keep it in. Get some help from Biddle at the blue line. It's back behind the net. This first line for Central Catholic is dangerous. They will set the tone if you allow them to and uh, you're in big trouble if they start floating around the ice. Kenny will drop it deep down into that Raiders zone, collected behind the net by Federaro, and he played it up ahead of the near right wall. Trying to work fast with it, Jankowski got it to the blue line and was turned back to center. He's on the loose puck, and it's off to the far left wing side. Birch, who scored in the first game of this tournament, drops it down into that Hingham zone, and the Harbinman will flick it off the dasher, and it's going to drop down ice. Icing has been waved off, the lasso on it. Might be the glue to that defensive blue line for the Raiders. Pass comes out ahead. He turned over. You don't see that too often. This is Clark. Shot wide through a screen to the far side. Collected there by Winship. He turns it over to Harpeman. Good job on the four check now. Slowing down the Raiders here in the opening moments of this first period there, Kevin. And a quality chance for Jacob Clark. That puck may have been deflected on the way in. Started fluttering. So early opportunities. And there's another dot. And that was Wooden who let it fly from the blue line and had it chopped down in front. So things right now busy in front of Pasquale, and that puck is thrown out of the zone and onto the bench, perhaps, in a faceoff upcoming. Scoreless here in the first. You talk about Matthew Pasquale. Here's a guy that, that uh, you talk about being on a mission, led up that tough overtime goal last year to Arlington in the state championship game. It was a pass from behind him that deflected off a skate, I believe, of his defenseman and in. It was just a tough break there for Central Catholic. And as a goaltender, you wear that for a long time. There's a backhander coming out of the corner and a save. So good opportunity on that uh, quick try by Sullivan as the Harbourman do a nice job in the early going with their four check. They've come out hard against the Raiders. Puck back out to center ice. Joe Jacobs played it up ice. Deflects behind the Raider net. Raiders scurry to it. Peters hurries it to the far side. Good four-checking scheme again. Back to Joe Jacobs. Shot up high. Chopped down in front. Loose puck finally collected to the near wall. And the Raiders will send it all the way. That's lean down ice. No icing to be called. Central Catholic in the midst of a line change. They live right down the street in Lawrence, Massachusetts. Not too far. Kind of an arduous, arduous task for Hingham to get here, however. It's a, Players uh, bang each other here to the near side icing is called. Uh, I mean, you're going to travel all the way through Boston, come all the way up 93 and make your way here. I think that's the way I'd go. And I can attest to that. Living in downtown Boston, there's always traffic this time of day, so you're logging a lot of bus time. I hope they brought uh, maybe a, a video to watch on the bus, maybe something to get them fired up. Faceoff coming down in the Hingham zone. They have come out, and they're playing quite well right now. Out shooting Central Catholic. Three love. Puck to the line. Kept in. Both back behind the net. Fowler, good player out there for the Raiders. On the four check, he'll steal it away. Gets bumped down to the ice. No call to be made. Harbinman trying to get it out. They move from right to left in the away. Black jersey shot for the blue line is knocked down again as Ferrero let it go from the line. Hingham has done a nice job blocking shots, slowing things down. Puck to the far side. Raiders on it. Solomine tried to do something with it. There's a big hit. Butterito keep it in. There's a shot off the crossbar. Big shot by Jack Gray with a chance. Gray on the loose puck again. 
Gray trying to work and get it there to Fonorino, and that's going to be held on to for a face-off by Kornak. Well, they got one by him, but it hit a bar. Uh, you said it right, and you just saw how surgical the passing can be from Central Catholic. If you're unable to clear the zone and you get a couple guys up ice, Central Catholic can flip the zone back around on you and really put some pressure in. Like you said, one pass the keeper already, but still nil-nil on the board. They drop the buckets to the far side. Harvey men to work it out. That's Kenny. Was part of that terrific shift put together by Hingham early on in this period where they had a couple of chances. Colasso chases it to the back wall. Dress a four check. Three on the four check, and it's score! Right off the skate and in! Wilkie with the tally! He looked as surprised as everybody else because he thought that backhand might be going well wide. A three man four check, Kevin, and they come up with a score. Yeah, I think it might have been Jacob Clark standing at the top of the crease. It was Tony Messina saying before this game, we need some trashy goals. They don't have to be pretty. You just got to create some traffic in front of Pasquale. And as you were saying earlier, how short is the memory span for the Central Catholic goalie? Because that's kind of a cheapy in front. Really not much he could do. And how about Hingham jumping out to the early advantage? Well, very aggressive on the forward check. Let's see who gets it. Clark was in the vicinity. You mentioned that. Wilty was there too. Now the puck stolen away by Jankowski as the Raiders try to get back into things here. This is Gray. Gray lost it off his stick. I tell you, Hingham is playing much looser right now than Central Catholic. Can't help the announcement. I think you said it right. They're logging so much offensive zone time that they've created enough chances that one finally slipped through, and uh, they've been the more active team on the puck. Puck down into the end. 319 time of the goal. In fact, it will be Jacob Clark sitting on the doorstep. They give the only assist to Higgins. Quilty certainly had something to do with all that as part of the fourth checking crew down in the corner. And now the puck behind the Central Catholic net. DiBiasso on it, hurries it to the far side. And the puck taken away there by Terrace. Terrace able to play it back behind the Raider net, near side. Jacob Clark, it's banged along the wall. Clark spun off the puck there at Tad. It's back to the line, near side. Good puck movement here. Kornak, the captain. Tommy, the senior defenseman. Kept it in, now it's back behind the net to Terrace. Terrace, another captain. Wall up into the wall. Over there is Jankowski trying to dig it free. Look at that four check. It continues to be very aggressive. Put together here by Hingham. Of course, the winner of this game will remain in the winner's bracket. The loser will have to move on to the elimination side of things. And another shot, and that ricochets off the skate. So they're getting traffic in front as Kornak let it go. May have gone off of his brother, Tommy. And now the puck back out to center ice. After being sent all the way down, as Hingham wastes no time, moving it up and down the ice here. Right now, Raiders a bit on their heels. Trying to sweep it to center. Giovanni couldn't get it out of the zone. It's back behind the Raider net to the near side. This is impressive put together here by Hingham in this first period. Dominating play and leading it one to nothing. As you mentioned, it was a mucker goal. There was nothing pretty about it. Really, other than one pinpoint pass, Central Catholic's been able to, unable to get out and skate. Puck thrown into the slot. Quick backhander covered by Kornak. As good collaboration there. Staley with a chance. Coming from the circle. We'll get a face-off upcoming. One of the rare face-offs for the Raiders in the offensive end here in the first period. And how is this Central Catholic team going to respond to getting punched in the mouth early on? They, they've had a lot of runaway victories. So how can they handle a close fight in a postseason scenario? Let's find out again. Monterero drops it along the blue line. It'll be taken away by Joe Jacobs. Jacobs sends it diagonally cross ice deep into that end. And we're going to get a whistle here and an icing call. A little bit of a delay there by the officials. I think they had a long look at each other, did the officials, in charge of the icing before they blew the whistle there. Lester to take this face off. Eric Lester. There's a lot of senior leadership. He was going to go up against Terrace, but he's whistled out of the dot. At the faceoff is back to the line. Galasso shoots it wide. Got it on behind the net to Winship. Winship able to maneuver away. Snaps a pass out to Galasso. Shot to a screen, and Hornak able to glove it. He looks like he's sharp here in the first period. Yeah, he read that moving puck off the stick of Raymond Galasso. Tested him 
low and away. That'd be ball one in a baseball game, but yeah, you never know. Throwing a screen in front, maybe get a deflection there and, and try to put something up high on this keeper who's been up to the task so far. Off the faceoff, Jake Higgins will wheel it around. All the way down it goes. No icing to be called. Raymond Galasso back on it behind the net. Plays it up the near side to Fowler. Fowler slips a pass on. It didn't find its mark. That was intended for Jankowski. Now turned back as Gray on the far side. They've done a nice job against this top line of War Central Catholic when you talk about Hingham. If they work collectively, that puck worked to the front of the net, however, and shoveled just wide by Jankowski. Puck played through the defenseman, Stephen Birch. He's going to have to chase it down. Pasquale's going to come out of the goal and play it up the center. Puck comes free. Raiders to the near side. Overskated by Fowler. Knocked down hard. Looked like a number eight, Jacob Clark, who was credited with the game's first goal as he ran into a stone wall there. He's not the biggest lad out there, but uh, he is feisty. He's on the loose puck now. And I think Hingham has the size advantage. If this game gets physical, I think they can throw their weight around. Rushed down the far side by Winship. Sean Brown, the trailer. Winship plays it off near side. Lester able to wheel it to the far corner. Winship back to the line. Bumped up the wall by Peters. Winship will play at the vacant space near side. Let's see who gets to it first. Hornack was trying to. Now it's behind it up to Brown. Brown maneuvering. Centering pass. Oh, just missed the mark. He was looking for Lester. Lester back to the line. All of a sudden, the Raiders starting to find some rhythm here, working the perimeter. Now a shot. Weak one from Winship from the dot near right circle. Face off upcoming as Hornack covered. Maybe a rubber stick there for Winship. These are quality chances in front, and all of a sudden, Hingham playing with its back to its own goal. That sort of looked like a penalty kill situation there, Don, as Central Catholic really held that zone for a lengthy amount of time. Pat Sirio uh, providing us with the replays tonight. I forgot to tell you about that, Kevin, that uh, once in a while uh, Pat will throw in a replay for us on some of the big and best plays that we witness here throughout the night at the Sanga Center. Where's my telestrator? Can I draw oh, that screen? Your, yeah, we're going to have to get you one of those. Okay. Uh, you got to work three games before you get one. <laughs> Quilty with a high shot on, and it's going to be covered up by Pasquale for a face-off. He'll come on down in that Raider zone to the right of the goaltender, the junior netminder. Both teams taking a chance. Put out fresh troops. Timmy Carroll to take this face-off, going up against Jankowski. Got more hockey coming your way at 7.30 tonight. Another good one right here on the NFHS Network. Puck poked out to center ice by Gray. Dashing after it, Fowler on the far side. He got turned off the puck and comes back to the line. And Biddle shot is on, but an easy one for Kornak. Nobody in front setting a screen there for the Raiders. Nothing like you. Inside the Sanga Center, you got a hut, coffee, fans enjoying the action. And a great turnout from students from Central Catholic and Hingham down low, all decked out in their school sweaters and... Boy, the Hingham crowd's been loud early on with the 1-0 lead. There's a shot on, knocked down in front. Jankowski was trying to set the screen. But a real shot was blocked away. This is John Sullivan, a wallop down by Biddle. Matt Biddle trying to set the tone defensively now for the Raiders. They trail 1-0. Lone goal, 3-19 into the period. If you're just tuning in, you might have just been getting home from work. And it was Jacob Clark with the score, 319 of the period. Good aggressive forward check resulted in a turnover and a mucker type goal. This is Colasso. Fowler goes cross ice with the pass. Birch holding, back pedals with it. It's been a penalty free first period thus far. Owen Fowler centering pass, deflected to the line. Long high shot by Birch, harmless to the backstop. Played onto the near side by Noah Jankowski. Flipped on by Raymond Galasso to the far side. Winship plays off a check. Smart pass back to the line to Birch. Birch plays it back along into the left circle. Shot blocked away again. Brown tried to wrist one through his screen, and Jacobs blocked it out of play, and they continue to play some dominating defense to go along with that uh, little bit of offensive surge and a goal for Hingham. You can see about three different harbormen plugged in right at the top of the crease in front of the goaltender, Robbie Kornack, but there was never any panic there, Don. They looked very cohesive as a unit, and... Once again, just sort of muddying the waters in front of this Central Catholic team. Yeah, trying to make the Raiders go through layers. 
to get a shot on goal. They do have a shot off a goal post or a crossbar. That doesn't count as anything. <laughs> That's right. Not even a shot on goal. This is Lesser on the far side. The pinch along the wall by Packard to keep it in. Good calculated risk. And look at that. Hingham continues to use a very good forechecking scheme to create a turnover. Pasquale had to make a bad save. And that was a beauty as that uh, was just a terrific forechecking scheme again. And Boy, I tell you, they nearly had one. I couldn't pick up the number of uh, who had that shot. He's going to climb over the boards here, Kevin, and uh, he's going to be hidden by the coach down there. It looks like Ryan Riley, maybe. Is that Riley 11 who had the chance? I think it was Terrence Concan in the sophomore with no goals, no assists this year. His eyes had to be big as yeah, saucers absolutely. there with the puck sitting at the top of the crease. It was somebody, that's for sure. So they go a little deep on the bench, and they have a chance. Nearly, nearly had another one. Back out to center ice, Staley on it. Played on to the near side to Peters. Lane trying to find some space. Good forward check by Quilty right there at that central Catholic line. They're just taking away the space. Really making it difficult for the Raiders to advance smoothly up ice. When they get in the offensive end, the Raiders have worked the perimeter effectively, but nothing in that good scoring box. Hingham has had the better chances here in the first. Result a 1 0 lead off the far side. DiBiasso lugs it along. He'll throw it to the back wall. Right up there, the Harbin. Hurried along by Higgins on the near side. Trying to scrape it up the boards. It's Clark. Going to be kept in by Biddle. Fowler takes a check, plays off. Carries behind the net. Fowler tied up there. Gets it back. Daly to the line. Quick shot to a screen. And that's wide by Biddle on the wrister. Scrambling to keep it in is Araro. Nice job there. Good hustle coming off the bench. Now Fowler to control in the corner. Back to the line. Cross ice it goes. Biddle, Araro in the middle. Araro will swap positions. Couldn't get the wrister off. And again, those layers of defensive players staggered in that defensive end have created problems. Clark nearly had a break down the wing wall. Kicks at it like a soccer player. And Biddle will take it away with a delayed offside here against Hingham. 3.57 remaining in the first period. And Hingham has played very well. Here's a break, however. Quick shot. What a save. What a beautiful shot by Gray. And he'll cover a rebound. Face-off upcoming. Well, he elected to ride in solo. He had the freshman Owen Fowler crashing the net with him. And we take a look on the replay here. A little bit loose on the rebound there, but able to scamper on top of it is Kornak. Don, I really like what the freshman Fowler is doing, playing down low in the offensive zone. He's been working hard back behind the goal line, really kind of quarterbacking the offense, and I think he's about to make a play here momentarily. Yeah, it, you just get that feeling, and at some point, the Raiders are going to break things wide open. Absolutely. They can stretch the ice unlike any other team in this tournament. They can connect a couple more passes through this neutral zone. Uh, that'll get them rolling downhill. Problem is, they just can't do that right now. Winship comes off the near wall. Tied up along the boards, bodied off by Jacobs. Look at the beautiful play by Jacobs. Plays it far side, trying to give it a chase. Taken away by Lesser, however, moving on the Brown. Winship from behind the net. Winship lost a handle to it, lost an edge too, and fell on down. And a loose puck squirts along to Joe Sullivan. He says, Thank you very much. Reaches a checkered line at center and drives it to the back board. Again, that four check is aggressive by John Sullivan here to the near side. Raiders trying to get it out. They're going to be bumped and bruised by the end of this game as they are really being attacked in their defensive end. Finley played it on behind on the cycle there. There's Sullivan. Sullivan walloped down in the corner. Trying over to Finley to help out. But Hingham in that dark jersey. Sullivan still hacking at it. Get it in the slot. A quick shot. The save it made. Boy, they continue to just play some hockey here. Concannon with a second effort. Here tonight towards net. Watch can Cannon load up, took a knee, tried to elevate it as high as he could. Luckily, Pasquale covers a lot of space for Central Catholic. He's an imposing presence in that net, but how does this Cannon kid not have a goal this year? Two great chances here in the first now. Off the faceoff, 243 remaining in the period. Scoreboard reflects an even game and shots on goal seven apiece right now. From behind the net, Evan DiGiovanni finds an outlet pass to center. It took a fortuitous bounce for the Harbourman, however, and it's turned right back in for that Red Raider zone. Comes to the near side, played off the skate, comes back out. Lewis trying to do something with it there. 
Biddle over skated it, got turned back as that uh, aggressive forecheck continues. Really the extent of that 60 feet or so, which is the defensive end for Central Catholic. Even when they get it a little bit over that blue line. Harbor men have been slowing down and turning it back into the zone. They grind it along the wall here. Bingham leading it one to nothing. Quilty trying to get it deep in the corner. Quilty, good aggressive player. Puck goes to the far side to Staley. Staley got broken up. Higgins with a shot goes whistling wide. Top line out there right now for the Harbor men. Quilty, well, he moved it to the front of the net. Higgins couldn't turn it towards goal. And back the other way come the Raiders of Central Catholic. Kept in by Jankowski. Played it down low. Return pass for Jankowski from Stankowicz, and that didn't connect. Jankowski will get it back and fires one wide of the fire post with under 90 seconds remaining in the period now. Another shot deflected just wide of the goal as they're shooting from all angles now. Not a bad idea as Staley had a good shift and a couple of scoring chances because of his hard work. On the far side, scampering to it, Gray. Gray tied up along the board. Fowler trying to keep it in. I'll tell you, Harbaugh been winning those little battles right now. They didn't win that one as Higgins just got rattled in center ice. That was the hit of the game. He lost the helmet, and that's the reason why we have the quick stoppage in play. But wow, what a wall up there. Give me the license plate number of that one, Kevin. 101 remaining in the period. Boy, Higgins got hit up high, lost his lid, and he's shaking his head as he comes off the ice. I think he was asking one of the officials if that wasn't a bit of a hit that was too high, in fact. Not an ill intention, I don't think. I mean, that's just a hard hit coming across the middle of the ice, but with such an emphasis on head and neck injuries, I've seen less called, you know, a, a target or a high hit at this level of hockey. I think maybe the head was caught down there on that particular one. Might be the case. Yeah, absolutely. Face off coming outside the Central Catholic blue line. Well, we'll play it on. Snapped along. Intended for Brown in the middle of the ice. That didn't connect. As Birch tried to spring him, the puck back out of play with 46 seconds remaining in the first period. Still 1-0, the Harbor men of Hingham. And for the most part, this has just been a good, even, end-to-end -end hockey game thus far. Even on shots on goal, seven apiece, and still no penalties in this game. It's been very clean done. Birch on the far side, trying to trickle it up the center. Got it to Lester. Lester comes cross ice to Brown. There's time to work with Brown across the line, reaching for that elusive puck taken away by Wooden. Now it's Lester. Tried to send an aerial pass right through the goal mouth. It was knocked down by Kornak. I don't know if it was intentional or not, but he did knock it down. Maybe he plays a little shortstop in his spare time. Puck on behind the net. This is Jacob. Played at the center. Biddle will circle with it. But around over to the near side. Played it to the red line. And again, that rush turned back. Hingham content to take a 1 0 lead into the locker room. Puck to the far side. And the well played first period. I think that went the way the Harbinman designed it coming onto the ice surface for the first period of play. Absolutely. They created traffic in front of the outstanding goaltender Matthew Pasquale and Jacob Clark found the back of the net first 319 into the game. It was a bit of a sloppy goal at the top of the crease, but Hingham believes that with the early advantage they can slow down the pace of this game, really clog the passing lanes of Central Catholic, and now Don, I think it's up to Kim Brambold to take his team in the locker room and say, look boys, we still have arguably more talent and if we can just connect a few more passes, we can get this thing going in our favor pretty quickly. A lot of hockey remaining. The Zamboni will come onto the ice and do their work here at the Sangus Center. And uh, we'll be back with second period action in just a bit. We'll have some replays and more coming your way as we leave you with one. The game's first goal. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome right back here to the Sagas Arena as we continue with our coverage of the MIAA Division 1A Ice Hockey Tournament. And uh, Kevin uh, Hingham scores a lone goal in the first. And have that, first, uh, that one goal lead heading into the second period of play here. When you're the bigger, stronger team, you want to create some traffic in front of the net. And really was Hingham coming out to the early advantage over Central Catholic. They look like the livelier team on the puck. They logged a lot of offensive zone time, and finally, this opportunity on the doorstep. Jacob Clark gets credit for the goal, his fifth of the year. Give the assist 
to the captain, Frankie Higgins. And really for the rest of the opening period, it was Hingham controlling the action on the four check. There were some chances for Central Catholic, but really it was Hingham just holding on to the puck, sitting back, packing in defensively in front of its goalkeeper, Robbie Kornack, who made seven saves. He had one shot get past him in the opening stanza, but that was deflected away by the crossbar. We always like to call that the goaltender's best friend. So essentially, Don, it was a period controlled by Hingham, but in the late stanzas, you could see Central Catholic starting to come to life on the offensive end of the ice. They were connecting some passes, and really, this was the first golden opportunity. A nice drive by Jack Gray, although it went right into the breadbasket of Robbie Kornack. And it really was a period that's going to have Kim Brinfold on his end of the ice trying to question maybe what they can do to stop chances like this. So many Hingham Harbormen in front. Terrence Kincannon had not one but two chances. That was his ripper from the knee. So really, it's lucky for Central Catholic that Hingham only has the one nothing lead. And I think for the Raiders coming out here in the second period, they have got to be livelier on the puck. They've got to win the races to those dump and chase opportunities in the Hingham end. And I think the next five minutes of this game, Don, could really determine uh, what's going to happen down the stretch because I think Central Catholic has to send a message quickly. They really do. Hey, let's take one more break. Uh, we'll be right back right after this on the NFHS Network. Welcome right back as uh, we're here at the Songus. You know, Kevin, uh, they may change the, the goal score there in the first period. I don't know. We had a chance to look at the replay. What do you think? I think they're going to go back and change this to Jake Quilty, the senior forward who I believe will get credit for his eighth goal of the year. In fact, I double-checked with the old Twitter machine, the Hingham Harbor men on Twitter are saying Jake Quilty got credit for yeah. that goal. So we're going to go ahead and change that on our score sheet. Still, we'll give the credit to Higgins for the assist. No matter how you slice it, though, it's the Harbor men with the one nothing lead, and that's key. It really is as they score at 319 of the period. Jake Quilty with the tally. I was surprised when they actually mentioned Jacob Clark scoring the goal as, uh, as what they announced here at the Songa Center. So we're just about set to get going with another 15 minutes of hockey right here at the Songas. Both teams are back on the ice. It'll be Hingham defending down to our left here, Kevin, in the second period. Uh, Robbie Kornack. Pitching a shutout through one, stopping seven. And you have Matthew Pasquale, the junior netminder, down to our right uh, for Central Catholic. And Robbie Kornack has really faced some hostile environments this year. He actually pointed to a game at Burlington earlier this season when the student section was really chirping him. Uh, there's only one man behind him in this large Songus Center. It's the goal judge sitting back behind the board so it's nice and quiet down there and easy for him to focus with this one nothing lead so we're just underway here in the second period both teams starting the period at even strength did not have a penalty call back in the first we are having some technical difficulty we do apologize with that with our internet service inside the Sanga Center and they are working on that behind the scenes so we'll do our best to continue with our coverage here Puck to center right on it. Higgins. Higgins will roll it back into that central Catholic zone to the far side. Biddle plays it out to center right. Waiting for it there is Tommy Kornack. He's a captain, defenseman. Left it on behind the net. 
As Pasquale played up ahead. Jankowski just couldn't handle it. They have bottled up this line pretty effectively. Neutral ice play for Hingham is winning them this hockey game right now, Kevin. And Jankowski's the guy you got to focus on. He's a coach's dream. Seemingly does everything right on the offensive and defensive end, but he's been quiet thus far. This is Winship rambling into the zone. Come to the right face-off circle. Try to center it in front. And that's deflected away. Buck played to the far side. Comes back to the blue line. Galasso with a shot. And that was chopped down in front. Might have been Winship who just knocked it wide of the goal. Puck kept in by Brown. Laid it off to Lester behind the net. Lester maneuvers away from one defenseman. Moves it on to Brown. Try to go from a crazy angle up high out of the crossbar and missed the mark. Good pass comes to Birch. Played on. Brown the Birch. Birch shot to a screen. Knocked down again by that Harbiman defense as they continue to just create layers and do the job. And Trevor O'Brien sprinkles it down into that Central Catholic zone. They can't get a shot through. Bruises will be badges of honor for Hingham trying to defend this 1-0 lead. How many shots can they deflect or block with their bodies? Puck back out to center ice. Going to be flipped from center back into that Hingham zone. Stopped there by Kornak. Where's number 30 proudly? Puck comes out to center ice. On it's Staley. Staley got it just inside the Hingham zone on the far wall. Now stolen away by Staley. Centers one in front. It was chipped off the stick of D. Giamani to the line, and they cannot contain in the zone, and DiBiaso forced back out the center. Sends it diagonally far side. Loose puck. Raiders starting to find some rhythm. DiBiaso trying to poke that through a pair of players. Sullivan chopped it down, got it onto the left wing side. Nearly a couple costly giveaways in that Hingham zone. Puck free. Sullivan centers it in front. That's Joe Sullivan. He's out there with John Sullivan. Now the puck controlled by the Raiders. Played ahead. Di Giovanni tried to sweep it down ice. Misfired on it there. And the lockdown mode continues at center ice by Hingham. They have just done a terrific job trapping the Raiders at center. There's a great example in the far side for Cannon, who's had a couple of Golden scoring opportunities. Great work along that wall. Drives it back into the central end. Central Catholic is going to get frustrated at some point here, Kevin. And the fact is, Hingham is a better team than the first time Central Catholic faced them three games into the season. Tony Messina said it openly. Look, we brought some guys back. We got more disciplined on our defensive end. And players started buying into this defensive-minded system that we wanted to run. And the results are clear here in the tournament. Puck play to the far side. Battle for it. Jankowski's going to ramble into the zone. Played it on behind the net. Looking there by Jack Gray. Gray got tied up. Puck still swept to the front of the net uh, by a fallen Raider. Good second effort there. By uh, number 16, Owen Fowler. Receives a pass on the far side. Sends it on down. No icing. Puck was touched by a few. Gray had it just momentarily. Higgins plays it to the far side. And a Harbinman will tip it out the center. Still 1-0. Long goal back in the first period. Three minutes, 19 seconds. Looked like Jake Quilty scored the goal. It was awarded to Jacob Clark. They have not made a change on that as yet. And now you got players on the far side tangling. As Jankowski, they've been watching him all over the ice. And he has not been able to... Find much wiggle room as Quilty was in the wrestling match with him on the far side. And Jankowski's got to stay out of messes like that. May have gotten lucky not to get called for a penalty there. So uh, don't bite on the low-hanging fruit. Just try to stay focused and really create some offense. Quilty could not get it out of the zone. Jacobs from behind the net. He spun around by Lester. Lebs Lester. Lester gets it back along the boards here. Lester's shot through the... Top of the crease is quickly deflected back down into the Raiders zone. And good work there by the Harbinman to survive. A little bouncing puck comes dangerously up in front. Another shot. He couldn't get out of the zone. And Clark had a chance there. Comes to the near side left here to Kenny. Couldn't do much. Puck back to center ice. And Brown will cut across. Oh, beautiful pass. And Lester. He went top shelf and missed it. Took a beautiful feed from Brown. That is by far the best chance for Central Catholic here today. And Lester missed the net. It 
two best chances have gone off a crossbar and over the net. And now we get a whistle and a faceoff going all the way back. All the way back down inside the Raiders zone. And uh, you know, come to the right of Pasquale. Legal touch of the puck with a high stick, causing the faceoff. Boy, Sean Brown did everything he needed to feed Eric Lester. He elevated the puck, tried to go top shelf, but just a little bit too high on that one. Off the faceoff, puck on behind. Comes in the near side here. D. Giovanni trying to muscle it down the left wing wall. Low skating winger. Plays it on behind the net. Able to drop it off smartly. This is kind of the grinder line. We've got a penalty upcoming as uh, we have a player taken down. First power play of the game upcoming. And it's going to be long to the Raiders. Maybe a much needed power play opportunity. And that will begin in just a moment as Entowitz was brought down on the play. Tripped up. Games first. Central Catholic will get an offensive zone faceoff here. As the tripping call was quite obvious, nobody really wants to go to the sin bin. And uh, finally, reluctantly, going to take a seat as Trevor O'Brien. We talked about it in the pregame warm-up, Don. How can Central Catholic create chances on the power play? Hingham took too many penalties in their regular season matchup, and that doomed them in the shutout loss. Off the faceoff. Comes on over. But our shot through a screen that was knocked down in front, and... Cornack got a piece, too, and sent down ice by the Harbiman. Two Cornacks for the price of one. Robbie made the save, and then Tommy threw it all the way down the ice. This is Brown. He'll leave it off. Biddle skates to a slice of the circle to the near side. Long lead too far for Brown. It's going to be turned back to center by Tommy Cornack and chased down on the far side by Frankie Higgins. Good to see Higgins okay after taking that pretty good wallop back in the first period where his, when his cap came bobbling off the top of his head. The trailer. Bonararo couldn't handle the pass. It's back to center ice. Central Catholic has not been real sharp here tonight. Biddle. Played it up ahead. Bonararo, good pass off to the right wing side. That's Gray. Biddle, shot to a screen. Beautiful save. Another save by Hornack. That toe save was a beauty just a moment ago. Wow, is Biddle able to find that shooting lane? Biddle back over. Bonararo to Biddle. One-timer. Hornack save. No rebound this time. And he'll cover for a face-off. And players, a little push, a little shove. Not much going on. Winship over there having a chat with Jake Higgins. Hornack, spectacular right there in that sequence. Boy, they give so much space to creep in and fire that first shot on net. Hornack up to the task, and then he knew exactly where that puck was throughout. And once again, he doesn't get rattled. There's some poking and prodding in front of the net. He just skates away while he lets some of his talented defensemen clean the man off the front of the crease. Yeah, he's in a bit of a zone right now. Could tell back in the first period. Galasso midpoint over to Birch. Birch got a big wrist shot. Scored on the power play in game one of this tournament. Jankowski shot. Redirected on the toy step. Never reached a goaltender. Another shot to his screen. And another try by Galasso. And they all got blocked away. Time and time again, they're powering it through, and, and no luck. Wow. And Hingham was an inch or two away from a two-on-one man-down opportunity. And Kowski. Fowler's pass never reached the intended recipient. Torres takes it and sends it on down. Both teams now back at even strength. So nothing on the power play for the Raiders. A couple of good chances, but that young man, Robbie Kornack, was spectacular between the pipes and got a little help from his defensive mates up in front. Now they're on the attack again. It was a four-checking scheme that led to the only goal of the game. They created a turnover, and Quilty lit the lamp. And here's an icing call against the Raiders. 6.20 remaining in the second, still 1-0 Hingham. It's clear that Hingham is playing with house money here. There was a real sigh of relief after escaping with that overtime win last time out, 2-1 to one to advance to this opportunity. They know this Central Catholic squad and really being one for one on penalty kill chances gets that monkey off their back from the last meeting. And with one goal in hand, Don, they can really pack it back in defensively and really focus on clogging up that Raiders attack. This is Lester retreating. 
Dancing out of his own defensive corner here to the near side. Turn it over, and the puck goes squirting to the goal mouth. Far side, Joe Sullivan trying to hunt it down. Sullivan, of course, for Hingham in the black jersey tops. They got the red and white trim, sharp-looking uniforms. Home team is Central Catholic in the white. They're just tuning in. They got the blue and red trim. There you go. Beautiful looking uniform on both these teams as uh, Lester trying to work his way out of the zone. He got turned back by Ryan O'Reilly. Now a long pass comes back to Lester. Lester able to poke it down deep into that Hingham and they want a line change. Winship on the forward check trying to gather in a, an elusive puck. Hurried it to the front of the net. Deflected the Biddle. Biddle shot hit a toe. Had to hit Finlay and is back into the corner. Winship trying to Put a check on. Puck skated ahead, however, by Ryan Riley. Riley had his pocket picked by Biddle. And now Brown to control up the windship. Windship couldn't handle the pass. Taken right back by Tommy Kornack. And he's squeezed along the wall in front of the sin bins by Brown. Whoop. Player falls far side. That's Federero trying to scramble to get back into the play now. He's getting a little help from Owen Fowler. And the puck free behind the Biddle. Biddle for Central to the near side. Gray's pass, tipped down by Brown. He wanted a line change. It allows Higgum to attempt a stretch pass. Goes for not an icing call. I don't know if you want to do that, do that too often and have too many defensive zone faceoffs against this Raider team, but they're going to have to have one now. Higgins, Jankowski, off the faceoff. It dribbles in on Kornak. He'll cover. He's probably been the story of the second period here, Kev. I'd say so. He's already made 13 saves in this game. Really climbing toward one of his season highs with all the opportunities that Central Catholic can generate. Fowler tried to poke it in front. It was intended for Gray. Again, the Harbinman will send it out to center gray on it. Back to Jankowski. Jankowski throwing his weight around just inside that Hingham blue line as the puck is back out to center. Quilty fights off a check. Tried to fire it deep, hit a body. Now it's sent deeper into the Raiders zone. Colasso hurries it along. Fowler will chip it off the boards and send it into the Hingham end. Central Catholic in the midst of a line change. Line changes are very challenging here in the second period. Both teams with their uh, benches on the offensive half of the ice, so it doesn't lend to a good, clean defensive line change. Good news for this Hingham squad. As, as a public school system, they have a lot of players that have worked in tandem and made a lot of line changes over the years as a unit. In fact, if you look at the goal scorer, Jake Quilty gets the assist from his fellow senior, Frankie Higgins, the captain. How many times have they done that? over and over again. There's there's a little more on the line than just a victory in the winner's bracket, Don. You know the public school team wants to hand an L to one of these outstanding recruiting private school teams. Play is on. I go to play it off to the far side. DJ Avani spun around at center. And it was actually uh, kind of spun right into the ice. He was anchored there and it became easy pickings to take it away. Puck free to center again. Nobody wants to put a handle to it. Finally, O'Brien trying to tame things down. Oh, but he gets wallop by D. Giovanni on the far side and went tumbling on down. Jacob Clark had it just momentarily. Got it to the line of Kornak. Shot from the angle on the far side was deflected away as Terrace tried to force it in front. Went back to the line of Higgins. Higgins shot through a screen, knocked down. Swept back out the center ice. That was dangerous for a moment. And a quick stick of Peters and company moved it on in. D. Giovanni now to control. A little funny bounce of the puck there. Had everybody moaning and groaning and wondering. Puck comes back to the Hingham line. And it must be nice to be young. Trevor O'Brien got thrown backwards into the boards and popped right back up like nothing happened. <laughs> it is young to be. Well, good to be young and nice to be young, I guess. <laughs> it's good to be young, nice to be young, and yeah, sure, makes you nice and <laughs> flexible, I guess, right? I don't know. I, I don't know what I'm talking about. That's why I'm stumbling, mumbling. I'm not young anymore, unfortunately. Young at heart. Yes, indeed. Puck to the far side, taken by Timmy Carroll. Fought off a check nicely. Three on two if they hurry. Pass comes in the near side to Minkin. Minkin will send it all the way across. Just as Quali was able to play it. 
Harkness back out to center with 2.21 remaining in the stanza. Nice move by Joe Jacobs. A long wrist to Ron Pasquale. I don't know if you ever saw that. Did not react, but it was going wide. And you might have realized that early. This is Ryan Riley able to run through a check. Lester has it. Plays it off to the far side. Taken off the Daster. Dasher by Biddle. Biddle got crashed into. Moved it to Brown. Brown tried to get it out of the zone. Intercepted by Jacobs and thrown right back in on Pasquale. No delayed offside. Everybody out of the zone. And here comes a break. Up ice. Two on one. Into the zone. Lester holds. Lester shot. Save. Cornhack. He was using his teammate as a screen. Perhaps, uh, you know, a little bit of the guy on the side there. I might give it to. And instead, Cornhack did the right thing. He just took the shooter with Winship. Just lurking over there waiting for a pass. A beautiful play by the goal center. What a play. Once again, the two Cornacks, Robbie and Nett, Tommy playing back on his heels. Very well done to knock that puck out of the air. Now on the far side, Cornack. Got it the center to Tommy. Delayed offside, face off going all the way down. They're going to say that was rather deliberate there by the Raiders. That was a beautiful play there. Lester trying to use wind chip. I don't know if we have a uh, replay on that one. And if we do, it'd be kind of cool to see how... Uh, that's how you play a two-on-one, both from the defensive standpoint and the goaltender's standpoint right there. Watch this. Once again, such patient defensive work. Look, it really, it's up to Kornak to make that first save, and then it's his fellow namesake, Tommy, that says, you know what, no second chance here. We're just going to swat this away. And again, no panic back there defensively. Not at all. Tommy Kornak took away the passing lane. Lester tried to decoy with wind chip, centering pass in front, and that was just great goaltending work by Robbie Kornak. Well disciplined. If I'm Central Catholic, though, I might want to try to get rid of that puck a little bit earlier on these two-on-ones. That's a couple times they've had one of their top skill men just try to rip a shot in front, maybe try to connect an extra pass and see if the goalie gets over late. Puck is sent down ice. No icing to be called. Fowler. Deflected it intentionally, it looked like, to the front of the net, but nobody home. And back the other way, Quilty. He has scored the game's lone goal. His shot muffled wide by Valerao. Comes out to the right side to Higgins. Higgins backpedaling with it, moved it on to Quilty. And Jankowski takes it. Stolen off the stick by Kenny, the backhander. The Squally with a big save. Wow. Huh. What a chance late. Did you see Will Kenny just sort of knock that stick aside and then create his own chance. Take another look here. Kenny just poking away, saying, give me that. And a backhand that nearly fooled Pasquale, who had to say, go, go, gadget leg to his left side. That might be the toughest shot for a goaltender to read as a backhander, and he just did a splendid job. And that was a pretty good backhander, too. You know who's got a great one? Sidney Crosby. Yeah, I've heard of him. Puck back behind the Raider net. Three seconds remaining in the period. It's going to be a scoreless second period. How do you like that? And Hingham's going to go to the locker room. They lead the number one seed in this tournament. one nothing through two. Quilty scoring way back when at 319 of the first, Kevin. Hingham doing exactly what it planned. Come out with authority, find that early goal, and then just really work on that defensive end of the ice. But I think, Don, it felt in a lot of ways like offense was their best defense in that period, creating some extra chances. And, boy, if you can double up this lead, in the third period, it feels a lot like Robbie Kornack has this game well in hand between the pipes. 15 saves for the Higgum tender in this game and everything going the Harbor men's way. The four seed leading the one seed, one nothing after that early goal and we're in for a lot of fun for the final 15 minutes. Another important stat, the, the Harbor men killing off the game's only penalty, so Central Catholic go for one on the power play. All right, we'll step aside. We'll be back in a bit. Zambonis are back out here at the Sanga Center. And, uh, well, it's been a good one. one nothing. Hingham. All right. Anytime you do work here, you hit submit, and it will show up. Any video here will always show up. See here, so you kind of set up your next spot. Got it.
Sangus Arena, the Sangus Center, I guess they call it now. Many years ago, the Sangus Arena, the home of the Low Lock Monsters of, out of American Hockey League. Uh, well, and now they're no longer. They have gone elsewhere. But, uh, you know, Kevin, through two periods of play, it's Hingham leading Central Catholic 1 nothing right here. This is the important game, not the Low Lock Monsters of 15, 16 years ago. <laughs> There is an important bid ahead in the winner's bracket. The winner moving on to that critical final group of four here. And Jake Quilty's eighth goal of the year still standing up. He scored it on the doorstep, 319 into the contest. And in the second period is when we saw that first really great opportunity for Central Catholic. It was right after this penalty kill opportunity for Hingham. And you can see here that there's a chance right in front, and Robbie Kornacki, is, or Robbie Kornack, excuse me, has been phenomenal in goal throughout this contest so far. And really, this was the best chance for Central Catholic, a two-on-one developing. You see Lester take that shot, try to create the rebound, but the Kornacks combining again. There was twice in that period that Robbie Kornack made the save in net, and then Tommy Kornack, the captain, sort of slapped away the second opportunity and then Hingham on the four check again trying to create some opportunities look at this just swatting away Will Kenny says give me that a tough backhand shot low and away on Matthew Pasquale who's given up that one sort of fluky goal in front off the deflection Jake Quilty's one nothing lead still standing up here and Don once again I think Central Catholic did a better job of that period of connecting passes and creating chances. They had the energy spurt coming onto the ice after the first intermission, but Robbie Kornack with 15 saves in net for Hingham. He's had seven shutouts this year. He's looked so calm, cool, and collected. His head coach, Tony Messina, telling me before this game today, you know, forget about getting a hot goalie who makes the dazzling saves. You want the guy who's consistent, who doesn't get rattled and I think he can thank, in large part, the defensemen in front of him because they have been patient. They have collapsed in front of him, playing three wide to really give no quality shots to a Central Catholic team that enjoys playing on one of the largest ice sheets in Massachusetts high school hockey. And tonight, on this nhl size sheet in Lowell, Mass., it's all the Harbormen so far, and they're 15 minutes away from pulling off an upset over the number one seed in this D1A tournament. Yeah, so right. Uh, no harm done for the loser in the sense that they continue on in this tournament. They just move and have to play out of the elimination bracket. So you, you can't afford uh, to uh, lose another. And, of course, Ingham, you're so right, trying to uh, stay on top and knock off the top seed and push them out of their way for at least a little time here. They still have to come in center ice. Raiders will defend down to our left. That's Central Catholic in the white uniform tops. That is the home team uniform color of the visiting team. Hingham, the Harbormen in their 
black jersey tops. Robbie Kornack has been outstanding. He has really been the story of the game, along with all the block shots put together. This is Biddle, a shot to a screen, and there you go. It's blocked again wide, and they can't get the shots through. 0 for 1 in the power play of Central Catholic here. Right now, their puck possession began to look like a bit of a power play, but the pass was intercepted by Will Kenny. Kenny's got that long reach, had that scoring chance late, plays it on down into the Raiders' zone. Biddle snaps a long pass through center. Chipped it off the stick of Winship, and it's going to be taken right back far side by Jake Higgins. Higgins is going to plow it deep into the Raider end. Quickly on it there is Birch. Birch taking off the puck. Lester there to help out. Finds free space left side to Gray. Going to be kept in by Jacobs, however. Spinning to keep it in is Terrace. Terrace, one of the captains for this Hingham team. He can help set the tone for you. Brown's going to loft it high up into the air. It was intended for Gray, but gloved down by Jacobs for the team in black. Jacobs across the line for Hingham. Carries down into the corner. Goal line extended. Tied up along the back wall. Plays off the check of Birch. Looks in front. Pass deflected by Birch. It's going to be gobbled up. And Jankowski comes flying through center ice down the right wing side. Into the high slot. Everything's going offside. They're just going to let that puck roll on. And it's taken right back by the Harbiman. To the near side, Trevor O'Brien. He's had some good moments out there. He's also been crashed hard into the boards. And he got up and kept on ticking. Puck turned over. Taken by Gray. And we got a penalty upcoming. And a late hit. After the turnover, and this is going to go against Fowler. And this will give the Harbourman a power play. Charging will be the call. And the first power play chance for Hingham in the contest. That's been a physical game, but that one outside the letter of the law. Hingham now with a chance to double up this lead. I know they say 2-0 is the most dangerous lead in hockey, but the way Kornak's been playing in net... I get the feeling, Don, that two goals might be a little bit too much to ask of even an incredibly talented offensive team like CC on a night like this. So Fowler is off for two minutes. Quilty on the far side, the goal scorer back on the first, 319 into the first stanza. Gave it away to Biddle. But Araro plays it down ice. Central Catholic could be dangerous with their penalty killers. Di Giovanni scoots onto the ice along with Gray. Spinning away from a check is Higgins. And it's played up ice by Quilty. Quilty will drop it off to the blue line. Maneuvering with it. Doing a nice job is Frankie Higgins. Higgins the star in that win over Andover with the overtime goal. There's a shot save. Pasquale on a good low wrister by Jake Higgins, a junior defenseman. We'll have a faceoff in the Raider end with 113 remaining on this power play. And you mentioned that goal, Frankie Higgins, 55 seconds into overtime during that 2-1 win. It was his brother, Jake, one of the defensive leaders, a junior on this team, who assisted his sibling on the game-winning OT goal. Shot to a screen, chopped wide by Frankie Higgins. Back to the line it comes. Terrace to Higgins. Higgins along the board. Higgins cuts down low, stolen away by Galasso. Torres will keep it in. Good job onto the right side, trying to roll it with it. Is Clark played it back midpoint. Good puck movement back to Clark into the circle. Clark pass midpoint. That's Higgins shot, knocked down in front, hit a body, a loose puck. Torres spinning with it, couldn't get it towards goal. The original shot had hit Higgins, and boy, that net was yawning there for just a moment. Oh, the puck was just a little bit too far back behind Torres. Did well to put it on frame though. Torres tried to center it, blocked right back to him. Torres controlling along the wall. Got a midpoint to Higgins. Good pass, right circle, shot, tough angle. Good opportunity for Clark. And again, Pasquale made the save. Nice pass. Terrace shot, blocked back into the corner. Taken by Frankie Higgins. 12 seconds on the power play. They continue to work that perimeter beautifully. Pass, they try to force it through. Brown stole it with the help of Jankowski. And Brown up to Jankowski. One-on-one, poked away neatly. Brown was offside as he picked up the poked puck. Higgins, beautiful defensive play there. Stepping through a check is Terrace. Terrace spun around just a tad. Both teams now back at even strength. Each team now 0 for 1 on their power play opportunities. And it's sent down by Fowler, who's got plenty of energy. Went too far, and it's going to be an icing call against the Raiders. Boy, you said it right. Jake Higgins made a 9-1-1 defensive play. And I swear these Harbor men look more composed when they're skating backwards. They're so patient. They're so good with their sticks. And... 
Central Catholic has just been facing bouncing pucks all night. They've been unable to really connect those passes and get clean looks. Off the faceoff, it's back to the line. Wooden shot, wide short side, long carom. Joe Sullivan after it. Poked on back behind the net. Harbiman trying to just keep that puck down in the offensive end. Holding on to a 1 0 lead. Puck thrown in front. It's bouncing dangerous like a top, and it's finally swatted away by three Raiders. Boy, that was just hanging there for a while. Lane trying to fight through. There was no space. Harbiman have been light on their game. I'll tell you what, they have played a nearly perfect game thus far. Defensive strategy has been brilliant. Offensively, a gritty goal back on the first, and they're not giving this Raider team any space. You're absolutely right. It's such a different game than that 2-1 win over Andover where they took 34 shots. Here they have just 15, and that's all they've needed thus far. DJ Giovanni on the loose puck for the Raiders. Played it all the way across to the far left side. Taken there by Staley. Staley gathering some momentum. He'll play it down and deep. Lane was awaiting at the blue line, but uh, there was no chance. He was flat-footed. Lester off the bench with fresh legs. Played it down to the corner to Charlie Staley. Staley tied up along the board, battling with Finlay. That's a pair of 15s going after each other. Staley, well, finally gives way, and the Harbiman will just be content to pop it down ice. And controlled by Steven Birch. Birch just plays it aimlessly for an icing call and a faceoff back inside the Raiders zone. That was a bit of a throw down ice out of frustration right there. And a faceoff coming to the left of Matthew Pasquale. Still 1 nothing. 9.32 remaining here in the third. Ingham on top. Puck sent ahead. This is Lester. Lester carries to the Hash mark on the circle. Back to the line. Galoso, big shot save is made by Hornack. He has seen everything shot his way. This is Lester. Played at the Brown. Just out of his reach. And the back check also slowed him on down. And this is Will Kenny back the other way. Kenny motors to the corner. Turned along the boards by Galasso. Blindly plays it behind. Lester there to scoop it up and move it on to Winship. Winship will use the glass. Looking for Sean Brown. Brown tilted off his pins by Higgins with a little nudge there. Lester will keep it in. Lester along the boards. Clever play. Got it down to Sean Brown behind the net. And poked off his stick and trying to pinch his Peters to keep it in. He can't. Quilty sent it back and uh, no icing to be called. DiBiasso. There's that Harbiman getting in the way again. Beautiful play by Marshall Terrace. Terrace, great job. This is Clark now. Clark behind the net. Taken down by Jankowski. No call to be made. Jankowski, wing to wing with a pass to the near side right. Tried to move the very fleet-footed Owen Fowler down ice. And again, a delayed offside will slow down the attack. Long stretch pass to center. Biddle will intercept. If you hang him, you don't want to start doing that. You, you've done a terrific job really taking a lot of the ice away. Don't give him a free skate on an intercept, intercepted pass at neutral. This is Terrace back to the far side. Swings past the defenseman. Into the corner. Now he's tied up by Biddle. Puck squirts at a near point to Higgins. Higgins aims one into the slot. It's going to be intercepted and slapped back down by the Raiders. And the Raiders want a line change as Jankowski is off the ice. Midway through this third period, Kevin. And I think the question is now, what can second-year head coach Kim Brandfold draw up for his team. We're into crunch time now. Seven minutes in change. Guadarrero couldn't get the puck through. What else is new? All night long, Hingham has just knocked pucks down, whether along the boards or into the slot. And Giovanni trying to race across the line, puts the brakes on, fires one, and there's another one blocked away, this time by Higgins. Jake Higgins got a skate on it. It was trying to keep it in to the near side. It's back out to center. Nice job by Staley to hustle back. Trying to perhaps create some good habits here for the Raiders. Di Giovanni into the high slot. Back check of Minkin. Slowed down his progression. Now the Raiders. Galasso. Flipped it along. Mankiewicz tried to move it deeper. Taken away by Concanon. Boy, did he have some great scoring chances back in the first period. 
icing call here in a face-off upcoming 6-28. Game plan going as planned for Hingham in the third period with a 1-0 lead. And Kim Branvold really knows the game of hockey. He's a skating and skills coach for the Boston Bruins on top of his head coaching job at Central Catholic. He said when he took over for the former head coach, Mike Jankowski, who he worked with as an assistant, he didn't realize how much as a head coach you don't get to do that individual coaching during a game. These are the situations he's been studying up for. How do you address the bigger picture and how do you dig your team out of a hole? Face-off win. Brown with a big shot. Guess what? It never reached Kornak again. It was muffled away. You sound like a broken record. It's amazing, isn't it? Puck back out the center. Biddle gently nudges it off the boards to Brown. Brown will fire it with authority into the zone. Winship will lurk after it. Moves it on. Lester the one time, and he had to go off the heel of his stick. Puck hurry to the blue line. Biddle hurries it right back towards goal, and again, Kornak finds it as he put the left pad on it. Boy, when they do get through, he's been the story. Delayed offside. This should go all the way down. That was rather obvious. Let's see what they call it. That'd be a big advantage for the Raiders if it goes all the way down ice. And it won't. Interesting. Remember, Central Catholic was a call for the one of those or earlier. All the way down. Listen to those Hingham students really coming to life on the opposite side of the ice. 5.53 to pull off the upset of the top seed in this tournament. Play on, far side. Puck will bounce and then slide deeper into that Hingham zone. Quilty scored the only goal of the game, couldn't get it out. Lane nearly had a chance with Di Giovanni there, but they couldn't collaborate. Lane in the corner, tied up along the boards. Now it squirts behind the net. Frankie Higgins giving chase along with Jake Higgins. Kept in by Birch, only momentarily got a potential two on one. Hingham looking for the insurance goal. Pasquale to save on the big wrister by Kenny coming down the wing. He was uh, like a locomotive going towards goal there. His Higgins stealing and played it off right side to Frankie Higgins. Frankie Higgins played it back. Looking for Kenny. Turns it over here. Bailey couldn't find a handle on it. And it's back to Galasso for the Raiders. I don't think we've given enough credit to Pasquale and Nett. Other than the one blemish, he has been outstanding. He's done everything he can to keep Central Catholic in this game. Biddle will intercept here. Biddle knocked down from behind by Jacob Clark. Really kind of nudged on down. Jankowski sent away through the middle. Shot rises a wrister up over the crossbar. On the bouncing puck is Fowler. Comes back to the line. But a row shot knocked down by Gray. It hit him in the seat of the pass. He got one towards goal. And again, Kornak was there. Fowler takes it off the dasher. Fowler double team, squeezes through, moves it on. A rouse shot. Again blocked all the way to center by Jacob Clark. He gave it a frantic chase, but Biddle won the race. Biddle pass up ahead into the middle of the ice surface. Jankowski had to retreat, and then it's picked off his stick by Sullivan. Offside, however, will be the cry from the officials down below. And something seemed to change on that last zone entry for Central Catholic. Looked like the four horsemen of the apocalypse. They flooded the zone so quickly, and it makes you wonder, where has that been all night long? Well, credit to the Harbormen, because they've just been clogging up all the lanes up and down the ice, and they've earned a chance in the last 4.06 to just muddy the waters a little bit more and get out of here with a one nothing decision. 4.03 remaining in regulation. Puck to the far side, wind chip. Those legs start to feel a little heavy when you're trailing by one and it's getting deep. Taken by Brown. Side of the net, stuff attempt by Lester. And again, Kornak was there. To the line, another shot, and that hit a stick and rides wide as Birch tried to find one through. Wind chip forces the puck onto the stick of Brown. Comes back to Birch. Puck behind the net. Took a long time to get there. Wind chip will take it. Tried to center one, and it's intercepted by Timmy Carroll. And again, the Harbinman will find some open space and sent down by Minkin. They'll look for a line change. Keep the troops fresh out there with 3.23 left. Winship out of his own. Miss Lester with the pass. Puck thrown in the line. Kept in by Winship. Only momentarily it's back to center. On it there, John Sullivan takes a wallop in front of the sin bins on the far side. Now Jake Higgins into the zone with some speed. Try to center it. He got it there to the front of the net, but it's knocked wide off the stick of Kenny. Comes midpoint. Hornack shot just missed down low. I don't think Pasquale saw that one through the screen. Oh, a little surge here put together by the Harbin, and they can taste the victory. Pass is intercepted. 
And the Raiders will loft at the center. They were looking for fortuitous bounce. Instead, they'll get a hand pass of the hockey puck and a faceoff upcoming. 242 left. Tony Messina, the head coach for the Harbor Men, has been doing this a long time, 34 years, his 10th as a head coach, and he said, this is one of the closest teams he's ever had. Not a single issue away from the ice. And as a man with five state titles, he says, that's really the key. How will a team play for each other, handle its business in the classroom, in the community, and this Hingham team has been one of the best, and it's on display here tonight. Yes, indeed. They're following the game plan to a T. Absolutely. Puck is lofted up in the air. Nobody knows where it is. You know that puck has the insignia of the MIAA on it. Puck goes left side to Birch. Birch keeps it in again. Moved it to Gray and passes outstretched glove. Taken there by Tommy Kornack. Kornack will use the glass. Got it to the line. And with a second effort, he'll poke it to the Central Catholic blue line. Taken by Gray on the far side. Run at, moved it ahead. Off the left wing, it's Fowler. Fowler snaps one wide and out of the reach of Cornette. Comes back to the line. Galasso played it on behind the net. Fowler couldn't contain it. Taken by Cornack. Cornack to the line. Kicked out by Birch. Played up in the Fowler. Fowler to the backhand in the slot. Maybe one too many efforts at a pass. It was intercepted and sent out the center. That was intended for Gray. Oh, well, Fowler's been a danger man tonight, Don. That might have been one of his last great chances. Time is ticking. Goaltender still in, 139 left, offside against Central Catholic. Crucial faceoff upcoming. One goal back in the first, 319 of the period. Jake Quilty the tally. And if you're Kim Brandvold, when do you pull Pasquale? You want to do it with about 90 seconds left. I think if they win this draw and put it in the Harborman zone, Pasquale might make a move to the bench here on the near side. It was a penalty free first period. Each team has enjoyed a power play here. Central Catholic had one in the second. Higgum had a power play chance here in the third. Each team obviously 0 for 1 in that category. Puck to the line. Sent along. Harbiman have won some races. Lose puck. Save on the backhand by Lester. Winship was on the doorstep. Cornack covers. And the young man, the senior, continues the play just stellar goal. He's stealing one here right now. This was nearly the moment, Don, and guess who? The senior, Eric Lester. He's been such a force in this game. That's a tricky backhand shot to create that rebound, and Pasquale creeping further out of his crease. Off the faceoff, Brown, Winship. Back to Brown, it's in his skates. Tried to hurry it along to Winship. Now it's free into the corner. Lester digging after it. Lester to control it. Got it back. But her arrow shot save again by Cornack. I don't know how he saw that one through the screen. Now Brown from the left point. His wrister knocked down in front. Under a minute to go. Puck sent down ice. Hustling after it is Biddle. He's in a wrestling match. Puck taken away by Kenny. The trailer moves in. The shot. Oh, he nearly put it away, did Frankie Higgins. We're down to 45 seconds left. Hingham has played a dynamite game here today. Puck out of play here to the near side. 38 ticks remaining on the scoreboard clock above the Sanga Center. And equally as important as that scoring chance, keeping Matthew Pasquale between the pipes for Central Catholic with just 38 seconds left. There's really not much time to work with here, Don, so it's going to be a frantic final few seconds, and the goaltender is still stuck out there in the blue paint. We're going to get a timeout. Raiders will call it. They'll take a deep breath. They'll talk some strategy. Tell you what, I, I don't know what you draw up because you can't get anything through. And when you do, Kornak has been there. He has not left any rebounds on anything shot down low. The only time he's been beaten all night, Kevin, matter of fact, was that shot that went off the crossbar back in the first. So obviously, that was a shot up high. I don't know if that tells you something. I'm shocked. Central Catholic has just not generated the opportunities that we become so familiar with, and that's a major credit to the Harbor men who are now gathered around Tony Messina. A third straight appearance here in what we used to call the Super 8. The Harbor men have been on this stage before, and I think that's so key. How do you play under these bright lights? Of course, both these teams have already picked up a win last week here at Songus, which is such a gorgeous facility. It has a major college vibe, the home of UMass Lowell, and I think it's been Robbie Kornack who shined brightest of all, and 
he's in the mix for that Defensive Player of the Game award for the Harbormen. They have prizes for their offensive and defensive players of the game. He might be walking away with it in about 35 seconds. We just saw his body of work. And a break, here's a break, up place. As we come back to the live play, Lester in collaboration with Jankowski, and they just couldn't connect. Puck out of play, who's it off of? This is a big decision to be made by the officials, and it looks like it's gonna remain in the Raider offensive end. Lester to take the face off. He has 1-1 back to Brown here in the third for a good scoring chance. Can he do it again against Frankie Higgins? Higgins will try to draw it on back. Empty net down to our left. Extra attacker is on. The lasso will play a point. Brown's got a big shot. Fowler is out there too. Jankowski will also join and win chip on the far side. Frankie Higgins will take the face off. He's got Tommy Kornack out on the ice. He can block shots. Done a nice job at that. Jake Higgins is out there along with Will Kenny. And don't forget about Robbie Kornack, the goaltender, the man of the hour right now. 27 seconds remaining. And we're ready, we think, for him to drop the hockey puck. I don't know what they're doing. That's a great move here by the coaching staff. Of they're giving their guys a rest is what he's doing. He's getting into a nice conversation. And it's all about uh, where the faceoff should be, I would think. Oh, it's been such a battle. The legs have to be heavy. But Hingham is so close to the finish line here. All right, Lester trying to draw it back. Trying to nullify that. Neutralize it all as Frankie Higgins. Higgins does neutralize it. Fowler can't snap off a shot. Now, Lester, quick shot, side of the goal. Connect able to guard and get a quick whistle. Another faceoff upcoming. They tried to sneak it in. They tried to get him to go post to post. Clever little play there. And, mm -mm, can't fool him today. Boy, Hingham's been in so many games like this. They look like a completely different squad than the team that lost 4-0 on the road against this Central Catholic team back in December. Down 18, second remaining, still an open net, down to our left. And they're pounding on the boards with those sticks along the Hingham bench. Backhanded by Brown, saved by Kornack, and he got the rebound too. Oh boy, the lasso showing frustration as he bends his stick above his head. He's playing the right point, Jankowski wrapping a rebound right back at Kornack, who's stealing it here today. Lester again, and Higgins to do it. Off the face off, back to Brown, shoveled it, bouncing puck! And again, Winship tried to put it five hole and Kornak stopped him. Wow. Uh, this looked like a bouncing puck for Winship in front. He's on the doorstep, but this puck just keeps fluttering and bouncing, and he tries to shovel it through, and Kornak says this lane is closed. And why not take another time out here? Messina this time, and, and you said it right, Don. I keep seeing Central Catholic players really flexing those sticks over the tops of their helmet. There's still 9.6 seconds left, but the body language isn't great. I know it's an emotional game. I know there's so much on the line, but there is still plenty of time here if you win a draw and you get a good shot on goal to create some havoc and let the puck luck take over. Well, with the pull goaltender, they've had three face-offs now in the offensive end, and three times they've moved it to the front of the net. Unfortunately for them, Robbie Kornack has been there. Kornak now has faced 25 shots unofficially, and he has stopped them all. What a fun hockey game this it has is. been. It's been a good one. Both teams have taken this to the mattresses. Hard fought on both ends of the ice. The goaltenders have been phenomenal. And why not? Down to the last 10 seconds. Empty net. Man up here for Central Catholic. Let's see if talent outduels physicality here. All right, face off coming to the left at Kornak. Lester to take this draw yet again. Going up against Frankie Higgins, a hero in overtime versus Arlington. He'll try to be a hero when a face off again. Lester needs to pull this one back. He got Biddle back there. They try to shovel it to the front of the net. Puck into the corner. Kornak trying to tie it up there. You got all kinds of Raiders going after it. Taken by Higgins on the far side. He'll walk it along the back wall. They have upset Central Catholic, the number one seed, with a goal in the first. One nothing here at the Sangus Center. Jake Quilty, the goal in the first at 319. And then, what a defensive effort put together by the Harbormen. Started with the goaltender, Kornak, Robbie Kornak, and they just 
had that layered defense all the way through, and Raiders couldn't beat them here tonight. It was a perfect game plan and beautifully executed by the Harbormen. All it takes is one goal and 25 saves by Robbie Kornack. They give a hard hat to their defensive player of the game, and they give a fur coat like Jon Snow in the popular HBO <laughs> series Game of Thrones, and I know exactly who that's going to. It's going to be Jake Quilty who scored the one goal just three minutes and change into this game, and from there, Hingham stuck to that defensive mentality that Tony Messina's been preaching all year, and the five-time state championship coach has got to be thrilled because this was a complete game played by the Harbormen. They have pushed the Raiders to the elimination bracket. And wow, the Harbormen, they stay in a quest for a trip to the TD Bank Garden in a championship game on March 18th. Who knows, it's all in the future for all these teams. Your final score, one nothing. Hingham over Central Catholic. Pat will probably run down a couple of uh, highlights for us and uh, Kevin, you can take it away and uh, We'll leave you with these highlights from just an outstanding game here at the Sangas Center. I think the story has to be Quilty on the doorstep in the first period, setting a tone early. Hingham blasted out of the gate, creating chances, creating traffic in front. That's not the prettiest goal you'll ever see. Jake Quilty, I'm sure, has more exciting, more talented goals on his resume this year, but the eighth one, arguably his most important because the Hingham Harbormen get the one nothing win and they will advance on in the winner's bracket. What a fun game to call. Hard played on both ends of the ice, Don, but in the end, defense wins championships. It certainly does. Well, we got another one coming your way, so we'll be back with that in about 15 minutes or so. BC, the Eagles, taking on the Eagles of St. John's Prep. Two familiar foes will go toe-to-toe. -to -toe here at the Sangha Center. Until then, we say goodbye. Final score, Hingham 1 and Central Catholic nothing.